Well, you have your own wired up on you there. God bless you. I'll borrow that as well. Yeah, yeah, you, okay. Thank you. Exactly. Good morning, everybody. Uh, before I speak this morning, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Lekan, and um, uh, he's been in the country for about four years, five years. I think you came in 18. Um, but I knew him when he was uh, six years old in Nigeria, oh. in Ibadan. So he's going to come and share his story now. Thank you very much, Andy. Uh, Jesus is risen. It's the reason why we are all here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And when, when sometimes when I stand to speak and Andy says his colleague, I try to say, no, I'm not a colleague, I'm a son. Because who do you call someone you've known since the age of six? He's, he's become a father to me and really he's been a father to, to many, many people. So I like to correct that notion, I'm a son, not just a colleague. Although I work with him, but I'm not a colleague. I'm, I'm just a son. Praise God. Uh, I just want to quickly share with you briefly a little bit of my testimony. And I've tried to summarize it, and I'll just put it into two. Into two. Uh, first is how I came to know about Andy and how I came to know about Soteria. So at the age of six, I was born, of course, in Nigeria, in Ibadan, uh, where I grew up, you know, as, as, as his life. I don't know if you've ever, you know, been to Ibadan where I grew up or the kind of area where I grew up at Apata. So I went to Prospect School, the school that is owned by uh, late Pastor Esso uh, Samuel Folao. I don't know if you know about him. So this is the school where I met Reverend Andy when I was at the age of six. So at the age of six, life was obviously very difficult for me. It was very difficult for my family. I've got three other brothers. We have four children. Things are difficult. Things are quite hard. Going to school wasn't as easy. So thank God for the Ministry of Soteria Trust. Reverend Andy Economist gave me a scholarship. So I was able to study in the school. So that, that took me through my primary school, took it through my secondary school. And when I finished my secondary school, I was able to go to Soteria College because Soteria has a college at Okeado. So I was able to go there for two years. And while I was there, for me, this is the beginning of my life. This is, for me, this is where my story really, really started because this is when I began to see God's map. This is when I began to see the reality of our life. This is when I began to learn, and I began to, you know, learn a little more, more responsibility. So while I was at Soteria Business School, I did a two-year course called Business Administration and Computing. So it's all about business management and IT skills. So I did, I had my international diploma from Chichester College because Soteria College was affiliated to Chichester College here in the UK. So I had that when I finished, I did something called ATS, Accounting Technician Scheme. I don't know if you want to become a child accountant, this is the way to start. So I started that, I did that ATS 1, ATS 2, ATS 3, and when I finished, I started my ICANN, and to the glory of God, I'm a qualified child accountant with ICANN, <laughs> as far as ICANN is concerned. And I don't know if, if anybody does accounting, it's all, it's all related to accounting. So I am a member of the ACC as well. This number one, I would not have been able to, to even make a start. I would not have been able to have this. I don't think I would have ever imagined I would stand before you here today somewhere called Oxbridge. I don't think so, but to the glory of God and to the love and to the kindness of Reverend Andy and the Minister of Soteria Trust, I've been able to stand here before you and tell you how I've been helped, how God, in his mercy, has picked me and has helped me. And this is the story. Don't think I'm the only one. There are hundreds and several of us. I just had the opportunity to stand before you, but it's been several and several of us that, you know, God has raised up through the amazing ministry and continues to raise because he hasn't stopped. In fact, in a few weeks, he will be in Nigeria. And I remember very, very well in those classrooms where I was, where I was thinking, I don't even know what my future is about. But God knew, and he gave me a future. But he had to raise someone. He had to use someone. He had to use people of the Soteria Trust to help us and to bring us into this state. 
And this is, this is for me, that is a little big part of my story. And this is the biggest part of my story. While I was at Soteria, at the, the school in Okado, it's, it's a missionary school. So we have the opportunity to hear God's word every morning. But it, it never really, really impacted me, I would say. It does, I listen, I was sitting there, like so many of us, but nothing was really happening. As a matter of fact, I grew up as a boy following his mother to the church. So I've always followed my mother to the church, but it never really impacted me. I've heard the gospel over and over. It got to a point I could almost predict what next the preacher would say. I don't know if you've got so familiar up to that level. You could almost predict, yeah, I know you're going to say that. Yeah, he said that. But it never impacted me. My life was never changed. Nothing ever happened to me. I never had a testimony. I never had a witness within my heart. But until this very day, until that particular day, when Reverend Andy was standing, one of these assemblies, and he was preaching, he was encouraging us in the fellowship to give our life to Jesus. And this is why I will never forget Revelation 3.20. Because that was a scripture for me. It said, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If you hear my voice, I will come in and I will dine with you. And on that particular day, I said, Lord Jesus, please come in. And since 2012, to the glory of God, for me, that was the beginning of my life. That was the beginning of my purpose. This is when I began to see life. This is when the light, as it were, came on. Because I was in absolute darkness. But thank God, it transferred me from, his dark, from this darkness into his marvelous light, like we hear in Colossians. And I'm so happy that it's an amazing time of the year because we are celebrating Easter. We are celebrating the, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Apostle Paul tells us, if Christ is no reason, we, we haven't got anything. We are just like any other religion. We are, but we are more than that because our Savior is risen. And this is the joy that I have. This is the hope that I have. Because Paul said, the same spirit, the same God, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, that rose Jesus from the dead, now dwells within us. So this is the confidence we have. This is, this is our hope. This is our joy. So beyond what we see, beyond what is around us, beyond the circumstances, we know, we have that faith, we have that belief that one day we will see him again face to face. We will sit at his feet. We will learn from him. We will see his face. I really look forward to that. I really want to see Jesus' face. I don't know about you. I'm sure you do. So this is, this, is, this is how the Lord has helped me. This is how the Lord has raised me from that very, very little boy, not knowing what the future is about, really. Whose father died at a very young age. Whose mother was really, really struggling to look after the four boys. But thank God, in his infinite mercy, I can stand before you here today. So I just want to tell you this quickly. I just want to tell you this uh, very, very quickly. Perhaps you are here and you are not sure of what, what this thing is about. What is this Jesus about? What is this Jesus about? I am a testimony. I stand before you today. It is only by his grace that I'm here. It is only by his mercies that I'm here. It's only because of who he is, not of who you are, not what you can do. You know, your eternity is determined by two things, really, by one thing. It's about where you are. You are either on Jesus' side, and your eternity is sure, or you are not. And your eternity, you know. So please, perhaps you are here and you haven't said yes. Today is the day. The Bible says there are so many things we don't know about this day. In fact, I don't know what's going to happen in the next five minutes, but I know something definitely about today. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. So this is what the Bible says. So thank you very much. That is a little summary of my testimony. And by the way, I've come to the UK about five years ago. I'm married. I'm settled. I'm blessed with very, very three little children. So they keep me really, really busy. So I appreciate your prayer for that. Thank you. His children are the best children in the world. That is the truth. Am I on? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. His children are the best children in the world. I know you think yours are. I think mine are. But it's not true. If you have your Bible, you can turn to uh, one verse from Galatians 2. 
and verse 20. I want to read it in the uh, NET. Galatians 2 and verse 20. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will take control. Amen. Holy Spirit, we ask you that you would come and take control. Amen. That you would touch our hearts and transform us. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name. I read, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me. So the life I now live in the body I live because of the faithfulness of the Son of God. The King James Version says I live because of, because of the faith of the Son of God. Has anybody got a King James with them today? Huh? Look at that. Oh, can you look at this? Is this King James? Yes. Look what it says. I live by the faith of the Son of God. How are you and I supposed to live? How are you and I as followers of Jesus People that know and love Jesus, how are you going to do life? How am I going to do life? How have I done life for the past 50 years? This year is my anniversary. I've been a follower of Jesus for 50 years this July. Hallelujah. On the, on the 28th of July, 1973, at 10 p.m., in a little village in England, I fell on the floor and gave my life to Jesus. How have I been doing this life for the past 50 years? However many years I've got left, how am I supposed to do life? This is how we are supposed to do life. Get this. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Most translations don't translate it like that. And they are wrong. Don't be worried. <laughs> Sir, don't be worried, but they're wrong. For example, the NIV says, I live by faith in the Son of God. It's like, my faith in the Son of God. No, it doesn't say that. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Now, listen carefully to how the NET translates, translates it. I live because of the faith faithfulness of the Son of God. Let's take this verse apart. Let's have a look at this truth. I have been crucified with Christ. What does that mean? I decided and I continue to decide to live for Jesus. My, it's like my life has been put on the cross, is dead. So I can't do what I want. I mustn't do what I want. When I've done what I've wanted and not what he's wanted, I'm in trouble. When people do what they want and know what God wants, they get in trouble. Like they can marry the wrong person. That can be a disaster. You can be going out with, with someone you should not be going out with. You can go out with someone who's not a believer, but you are. I don't know where we get that from. How can we be unequally yoked? How, how, how is it that if I am crucified with Christ, he must remain as my Lord? Is he my Lord? So I, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. I no longer live. So I, I keep him as my Lord. My old life is dead and finished. No, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. You may look perfect. Hello? 
You may look perfect, but you're not. I may look good, but I'm not always good. It's great because I do something called sin. And at other times I, I make some mistakes as well. They're not the same as sin, but sometimes I sin, sometimes I make mistakes. But I have been crucified to Nigeria. 1991, March. I was there for about three weeks. I came back to Heathrow. When I arrived at Heathrow, I fell on the floor, prostrate, and kissed the floor and said to God, I'm alive. <laughs> oh, my days. <laughs> I'm not going back ever. I prayed. I'm just telling you the truth. I said to God, it is finished. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's like, it's like, hey, okay, hallelujah. <laughs> I was praising Jesus. I'm back home. And then, and then I returned to Sussex by the sea. Uxbridge is good. Sussex is like, oh, it's very, 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 very good. <laughs> I'm home and I've already made the decision I'm never going back. It's finished. But you see, I've been crucified with Christ. Uh -huh. Jesus begins to speak to me, begins to do a work in my heart. Go back. Ah! I'm not going back. Go back. I begin to have these desires to return. So I go the next year and I take a big team, lots of people with me, nurses, men, women, nurses, evangelists, Hallelujah. pastors, social workers. Amazing. And we've been going back since all that time. We've We've got lots of things happening there because I've been crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. That's the thing. Is it, if somebody said if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. You see, you can't marry who you want. You can't even just marry young people who you want. You, you just, you and I just cannot do what we want. So I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but he lives in me Amen. by his Holy Spirit. The risen Jesus by his Spirit lives in me and you if you've received him. I, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Or I like the way my, my translation says it. I live by the faithfulness of the Son of God. Jesus was faithful. Have you noticed that? On every page, on every story you look at, he's faithful. To the woman at the well in John 4, who came to draw water, he was faithful. Prophesied over her life, told her about her life, told her about her past, and gave her an opportunity to have a brand new future, he was faithful. To blind Bartimaeus, who cried out, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. He was faithful and stopped. He stopped for blind Bartimaeus and gave instructions to his disciples, call him, bring him here. He was faithful to blind Bartimaeus, 
saying to him, what do you want me to do for you? I want to see, Rabbi. Your faith has healed you. Go. To the woman in John 8, when they, when they found her in the middle of adultery, they caught her in adultery, got hold of her, dragged her, dragged her to Jesus, threw her down in front of him and said, our law says we should stone her. What do you say? Bending down in the ground. They're all looking at him. Everybody's looking at him. Hundreds of people are looking at him. Drawing something on the ground. Rises to his feet. If you've never sinned, throw a stone and kill her. They all walked away. The olders first. They realized something. Then the youngest, they all left. And the woman is alone with just Jesus. And he says to her, is anyone here to condemn you? No, sir. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He saved her from death. More than that, he gave her a brand new life. She was an outcast of society. Transformed her life. In Mark 1, uh, a leper comes to Jesus, throws himself in front of Jesus, and says to Jesus, if you will, you can heal me. He says, I will be healed. See, all the people that Jesus met in the Gospels that we know about, that, that came into contact with Jesu Christi, were healed or blessed <laughs> or instructed. <laughs> the hungry were fed. <laughs> Hallelujah. 5,000 men, they didn't include the women, number them. Some fifteen to 20,000 people. The man of compassion. He only did anything out of compassion. Everything that he did was out of compassion. When he taught, it was out of compassion. The Bible says he looked upon them that they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them. The hungry he fed because he had compassion. The sick he healed be had because, they had com because he had compassion. Everything that he did, all the ministry that he did, was out of one thing, compassion. Amen. How am I living my life? How have, I, how have I lived my life? How am I living my life? I live by my life as I look at the faithfulness of Jesus. Living, he loved me. Dying, he loved me. He was faithful. He was faithful in the garden of Gethsemane, the, Friday, the Thursday night. Can I remind you that Jesus almost died in the garden? You know this. I remind you. My soul is overwhelmed, he prayed, to the point of death. My soul is overwhelmed. I'm almost dead here. I've known some people that have died because of stress. Stress killed my father. Stress and smoking. Stress was the number one reason my father died. In the garden on the Thursday, it's, the Bible says, 
my soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. But we know that he could not have died. God would not have left him die there. So he went on to, to Good Friday, but it was bad for him. It's good for you and me. Good for the world today. But that first Friday was the worst day. Friday. When they stripped him naked. Tied his hands to a post. Stretched his body out. And began to whip him. Cut from his head to his beautiful feet. From the back of his head to his feet, his back, his backside, his thighs, his legs, cut. The front, the lashes would turn, would turn around and cut his front. After a five or six minutes of flogging. They cut him. He fell in that pool of blood. They picked him up, shivering and shaking. Poured some water on him, mixed with salt, to reduce the bleeding. Then the Roman soldiers got hold of him and beat him and struck him and spat on him and forced a crown on his head and pretended to worship him. Made him carry a beam to a hill called Calvary. And everything that he did in the garden on Thursday, he thought of you. And everything he did at the, at the whipping post, he thought of you. You and I were on his mind. He thought of the world to bring salvation and healing for the world. The Bible says that you could not recognize him when the, by the time they finished with him. He was unrecognizable. Isaiah 52 and 3, he was so marked and marred, he didn't look like a human. You could not recognize him as Jesus of Nazareth. He was so disfigured. Friday morning, nine o'clock. Three hours in darkness, three hours in light. He's hanging there because he thought of you. He was like a rose, trampled on the ground. Hallelujah. He took the fall and thought of you above all. This is Jesus. Placed him in a tomb. Friday evening. Risen by Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, we live, we live this life. When we give our lives to Christ and we are born again, Lekin shares something of his experience of when he was born again. This is how we live this life. I live because of the faithfulness of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, Jesus died for our sins, our sorrows, and our sicknesses. I have sinned. You have sinned. I have sorrow. You have sorrow. I have sickness. You have sickness. From time to time, I have sickness. You may be here today sick. You can be sick in body. You can be sick in mind. Your mind may be sick, and you may not even know it. Hmm? Hello, somebody. Yep. Your mind may be sick, <laughs> and you may not realize it. 
And this Jesus died for our sins. A.K. Alleluia. This Jesus, Jesu Christi, died for our sins, our sorrows, and our sicknesses. I've known sorrow. Some people that have experienced some of the things that I've experienced, the sorrowful things, the events, sometimes because of the things that I've done, because of my own stupidity, my own sin or my own mistakes, I've put a lot of sorrow into my life. Sometimes the sorrow has come and it's got nothing to do with what I did. But I've had sorrow. I'm the great physician. Jesus has healed me, changed me, transformed me, and put me back on my feet and healed my heart. This Jesus that died on the cross died for sins, sorrows, and sicknesses. So today, if you've never come to the physician to be born again, do it. Maybe you have. Many have. And maybe he's not Lord. You've not allowed him to be Lord in every area or the area that he's talking to you about at the moment. He can help you with that. Why don't you give him that area that you are struggling with and say you can have that. Help me with that. Be Lord of that. Whatever that, whatever that is, Jesus comes into our house, as it were, our lives, and he wants to have entrance into every room. The downstairs, the upstairs, the basement, the loft room, every area. And as he reveals his purposes to us, and as we allow him to be Lord of that area, great things can happen to us, in us, and through us. Turn to your neighbor and say, through us. Through us. See, because, because we changed our minds, there's been blessing where we go. Because we changed our minds and allowed him to be Lord, there's been blessings in the countries, including Nigeria, where we go. See, you have a destiny. Find it. You have a destiny. Don't miss it. Maybe you think, you know, bronze is good enough. Bronze is not good enough for you. Bronze is not good enough for me. I want, I want gold. I'm not talking about money now. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want the first prize. I don't want silver. I don't want, I don't want plan B for my life. Hallelujah. I want plan A. Amen. I want to keep in step with his spirit. Whatever he tells me to do, I want to do. Jesus is. How are you going to live this life? How are you going to live it? You, you and I can only live it as you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, but more than that, he's calling you today to something. Say yes. In the words of Mary, I finish with this. Whatever he tells you to do, you, you should do it. You better, you better do it. Why? Ask me why. No, no, ask me why. No. Ask me why. Because he knows best for you. You don't know best for you. I don't know best for me. But when I, when I discover his will, and when he reveals his plan for me, when I say yes to him, that's good. Because he's good. 
because Jesus is good. I live because of the faith of Jesus. I live because of the faithfulness of Jesus, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Let's pray. In a moment, I'm going to lead us in a decision, in a prayer, a decision prayer. And before I do that, I just want to read the decision prayer to you. So as our heads are bowed, listen to these words. It may be words that you want to say to him in a moment. Let me read them first, and then we'll pray. Lord Jesus Christ, I know I've sinned in my thoughts, words, and actions. There are so many good things I've not done. There are so many wrong things I have done. I am sorry for my sins and turned from everything I know to be wrong. You gave your life on the cross for me. Gratefully, I give my life to you. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. Come in as my Savior to cleanse me. Come in as my Lord to control me. Come in as my friend to be with me. And I'll serve you, Jesus, all the remaining years of my life. If this decision you want to make as a recommitment, you can. If this decision you would like to make for the first time, if this is the prayer that you would like to pray, pray with me, line by line. Lord Jesus Christ, I know I've sinned in my thoughts, words and actions. There are so many good things I've not done. There are so many wrong things I have done. I am sorry for my sins and turn from everything I know to be wrong. Jesus, you gave your life on the cross for me. Gratefully, I give my life to you. I ask you to come into my life. By your Holy Spirit, come into my life. Come and be my Lord. Come and control me, Lord. Come and be my friend and be with me. Help me, Jesus, to serve you all the remaining years of my life. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for everybody. Lord, where there is sin, forgive. Where there should be repentance and a turning from sin, Lord, help your people. 
where there is sorrow here today, Lord, bring your healing and your power in Jesus' name. Where there is sickness of mind or body, Lord, living Jesus, bring your healing in Jesus' name. Refresh us. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lekin, where, can I have my box with my books?